about nap time. Hi, everybody. This is great. Um, so I am Beth Schechter. I'm Lizzie Diamond. Hi. And together we are two of the four co-founders of MapTime. Um, raise your hand if, just to make sure, who here has heard of MapTime and knows what it is? Okay, sweet, awesome. Well, okay, great. We changed the talk a little bit so that we wouldn't spend the whole time telling you what it was, and I'm glad that we did that. Good job, Lizzie. Um, okay, cool. So about this whole MapTime thing, um, some introspection. Why are you here? Think about it for a second. Look at the puppy. Keep looking. Okay. Think about the community you are a part of right now. Did this community exist when you made your first OpenStreetMap edit? What about when you made your first map? It would not surprise us if there were people here who still have not edited OpenStreetMap or made a map. Actually, raise your hand if you haven't made an edit to OpenStreetMap. That is, yeah, it's possible to have not made an edit to OpenStreetMap. I've made like two, so I'm with you. And this is because maps, maps are hard. Um, when I started doing this work with MapTime, um, I really was having a hard time with maps, which is why we started doing it. Um, and even after two years of teaching some of this stuff, it's, they, they were hard and they're still hard. Um, they're especially hard if you're going it alone, like I was. What do you need to learn? How do you learn all of this vocabulary and all of these tools? What if you don't even know what the vocabulary is or what the tools are? Remember what it was like when you didn't know what Postgres was? I bet that there are some people in this room who still don't know what Postgres was. I don't know what Postgres is. I'm not kidding. Um, so where, where do you start in this vast landscape of hard words and questions that you don't even know how to ask? This is kind of how I feel sometimes when I start thinking about it, especially in the beginning. For some people, learning alone works just fine, and that's great. Um, they are okay banging their head against the wall until they figure it out. But enough head banging, and it's easy to give up. If it wasn't for my friend Thomas Barnwell, this is how I would have ended my master's project, which was a map of fruit trees made with Google Maps. I would have ended it like R2D2 on the ground in the desert. So what if there was a place you could go with other people who are also sick of banging their heads against the wall? And what if that place not only existed passively, but actively, and it helped you to thrive? Enter map time. It's the end-ish of this conference, and by now you've probably met someone with a rainbow sticker on their badge. Do you guys have rainbow stickers on your badge? Yes? No? If you don't, come see us and we'll give you one. For every map timer you meet, you'll get a different definition, especially now that there are 60 chapters. 60 chapters around the world, and my favorite thing is that each one of them are completely different. Um, I love the map time New Orleans, um, I, what is that called? Florida Lee. Florida Lee, that has a rainbow around it. Um, I also love that like map time Helsinki has this like beautiful blue map that people have taken like the rainbow label and done whatever they want to. Um, I mean, it's just completely amazing that we're all unified in the same community and yet we're all so very, very, very different. It brings me endless amounts of joy. Rainbows, watercolor. These are all different chapters. None of these chapters are repeating, by the way. This is all different people. And so, and as a, I mean, as you can imagine, map time means different things to different people. My definition is that map time is literally time for maps manifested through an international community of chapters who are all connected through their love of teaching and learning. My definition, map time groups are hands-on, beginner-focused meetup groups for learning about maps, specifically open source. The idea is to make learning not only accessible for everyone, but also to make being a beginner empowering. Um, I don't know how many of y'all, this is your first conference, but you'll notice that there we had these uh, new attendee banners that you could put on your badge, and that we had a first-time attendee happy hour uh, the other night. Um, and the idea was to celebrate the idea that 
you're coming into this community as a new person and, and like not making that a scary thing, but making that an awesome thing because it is awesome. So the individual definitions of different map time chapters may differ, but the principles are pretty much the same. Um, first is that uh, map time groups are hands-on. You go to map time to actually build and do things. Um, this is a uh, map time Oakland when we did a uh, tutorial development tutorial a tutorial on developing tutorials, and we actually went and developed tutorials. It was pretty cool. Um, the, uh, the second thing is that it's beginner focused. You won't end up going to a map time chapter where you're doing like advanced multi spatial analysis. You're, you're going in assuming that no one in the room has ever heard of any of these words before. Um, and it's like very, very, very explicit. We, that's what it's for. Um, map time is an open source community. We build in the open. We put all of our chapters, they have their websites on GitHub, all of our materials go on GitHub, and different chapters can take and fork and rewrite and remake different materials that um, they want to teach. Map time is accessible, uh, literally, figuratively, conceptually accessible to like very, very basic level of like, what even is a map? And why is it important? And why are we talking about it? And you know, all the way up to answering any question that anyone has ever. And, and last but not least, map time is empowering. You know, we're really excited about being beginners and about making it exciting to be a beginner. This is a like GIF supercut of every slide I've ever written that is at the end of map times, which is like, you know, awesome and you're great and that's awesome and there's lots of exclamation points and colors and heck yes, it's great. It's amazing. I think I'm waiting. I think there's a puppy in this too. So I'm just going to sit and, and look at it till the puppy comes up. Oh, yeah. I like the one that's just the same slide over and over again in different colors. That's great. Oh, my goodness. There you go. Cute puppy. All right. Um, this is a slide that I've put in several map time presentations too, which is just like, you know, like sometimes you think about ridiculous things and that makes you smile and makes you feel good to know that like the world is awesome and everything is great and you're doing the hard work by being here and listening and trying things out, doing new things. And also, you know, copious gifts of puppies because it makes everything better. Um, and aspirationally, you know, these values we're talking about are the same values that the OpenStreetMap community has, you know, accessibility and beginner focused and hands on and collaborative and open source, but that's not necessarily the case. You know, a lot of people come into the OpenStreetMap world and they, they get stuck and they make one edit and then they never come back or they make two edits or they try to import or something happens and it's like a really not fun situation where you're being yelled at or you're being... Ch uh, ostracized um, for what you're trying to do and trying to be a beginner. So, um, and that's true for many open source communities. Uh, you, you know, the as the community gets larger, as you know, a tool is, is being developed, and then all of a sudden, there's a lot of people who are involved with it, and those aren't necessarily the same people who built it, or the same people who know it very intimately. So the community makeup changes, and there are all of a sudden different skill sets and different levels of knowledge, and we have to figure out how we can, uh, as a community, come together and like bridge those gaps. Um, and in these kinds of situations, just like in, in uh, with OpenStreetMap, you know, map time is serving as an on-ramp to editing OSM, where it's not just doing it alone, not just jumping right into an email listserv and trying to make your case, but actually being around a group of people who are also beginners, also new to it. Um, and this OpenStreetMap is one of OpenStreetMap 101 is one of the top map time tutorials that people have done. Um, it's been done in a lot of different cities, um, you know, everywhere from Oslo to Puerto Rico um, to Turku, Finland, um, and Seattle, um, which had 20 mappers editing not in ID but in Jossum. Which is insane. They're making their first. I mean, not that insane, but it's cool. Like they're 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 really diving in, um, and this is you know a massive group of people who, if you just like search OpenStreetMap and Map Time on Twitter, you start to see like even people like Danielle. Danielle made her first OSM edit at Map Time SF, and now she's running the Map Time Oakland chapter. So you know, Map Time is is really proving that it can be this on-ramp to open source and on-ramp to um, OpenStreetMap. So how many of you made your first edit? 
at a map time event. Hell yeah. That's more than one. That's super cool. <laughs> I was expecting like maybe two, but we have more than that. So we seem to be doing something right. You know, that the more and more people are trying to do this, more and more people want to be a part of it. I mean, well, actually, we've reached the tipping point with map time. We're about two years old, and at this point, we feel like we're preaching to the choir about this stuff. This is us at State of the Map, uh, the, uh, State of the Map US 2014. It was our first ever Birds of a Feather, um, and a meeting where we actually worked with the community to define what we are. It was two years ago. That was last year. 20, no, 24, well, that was 2013 that we just had the picture of. 2014. No, that was 2013. Oh, okay, maybe it's 2014. It's been a while. Anyway, oh, yeah. so so yeah, you you already you already know what we're about. We could have just as easily not defined map time, and I think you would have probably gotten the picture. You would also probably have a pretty good idea of what not to do at a map time, like selling or making people feel bad or using big words to make yourself feel smart. And and people are self organizing around this idea. Uh, if you're a map time organizer or a map time attendee, please stand up. Give yourself a pat on the back. Which you already did, which is great, perfect. Or you can give the person next to you a pat on the back if they consent to it. <laughs> so decisions are made by those who show up. A community, all a community is. Literally, it's just a sum total of its members. And map time exceeds these definitions because map time is really just all of you in addition to hundreds of other people who are out there in the world who couldn't be with us today. In 13 time zones. Oh, pop quiz, because we're going fast. How many time zones are there in the world? More. More. 40. There are 40 time zones. And China is all just one time zone. So um, this is a slide, uh, this is Penny Beams. She works at Confluvium in, in, in Hanoi, Vietnam, and she's talking about um, making maps and making web maps and how it's really, really hard and banging the, her head against the wall. And, and in this particular case, she was talking about Leaflet, but like the whole point is that you can't do it alone because like we're not all autodidacts and we're not all you know content with sitting in our rooms alone. alone alone, banging our heads against the wall, trying to figure out how the heck this works, or what it means to have a type error, and why it's happening. And I mean, is it really just that I forgot to put a comma? Or, or is, it, is it a bigger problem? And how do I know? And how do I figure that out? And, and, and you know, how do I keep going so I don't give up? So if you want to learn more, head to maptime.io. Um, follow us on Maptime HQ on Twitter. And find all the rainbow stickers. Keep going. Keep learning. It just gets more fun all the time. Because then, all of a sudden, you have a map time Corvallis where every single person who shows up is a Java developer. Not JavaScript, Java. And they're trying to do you know, crazy hardcore analysis. And then they put their materials online. And then you get to try it. Or you end up with a situation where there's 25 different versions of introduction to leaflet or an introduction to web mapping. And Almost every chapter has had a meeting where they've edited OpenStreetMap. And we have map time for kids. And map time shows up at conferences. And people are meeting up regionally. And everyone is just like really, really excited about this idea. Because it's actually an idea that we've all had before. Hey, I don't know how to do this. I'm going to ask someone how to do it. And that's it. That's all we're doing. And like, all we did was put that idea in people's heads. And then they were like, whoa, that's crazy. I can actually do that. So you know. Thanks. <laughs> also, um, tomorrow, if uh, for anybody who doesn't know already, um, we're having a map time summit. It's um, a meeting for many of the, or it's specifically geared for people who either organize a map time or are interested in organizing a map time, um, find us, go to maptime.io and find out all the information, sign up through Eventbrite. And I hope that I see you tomorrow or on Twitter or somewhere else. Happy mapping. Oh yeah, um, 
Oh, thanks. Um, so uh, we're not going to take questions. And I mean, we have a little time. I can go on my why I don't take questions rant if you want. Um, or what we can do is you can use the rest of this time to like talk to the people next to you and talk about community and talk about mapping and like figure out, you know, my guess is for most of you, the person sitting next to you is a map time organizer. Um, considering how many people like stood up, you know. Um, so you, know, you can talk to them about starting a map time in your town or to find out if there is one or to just talk generally about community. Um, and if you do have a question and it's like burning and pressing, you can come and talk to us um, up here, but we're not going to take questions up here in front of everybody. Um, so thank you so much for taking the time to come and listen to us and look at cute puppies. Should we just look at cute puppies? I'll just leave that up there for now. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs>